everyone hope we're all doing very very well today i'm going to be sharing with you guys my australian stock portfolio now i am currently holding 10 different companies in my portfolio and it's very important to have a diversified account i am not an expert by any means please do your own research i just thought that it would be fun to share with you guys the 10 that i have picked out Now let's get started with the first stock Australian foundation investment company, stock ticker AFI. Now this is an index fund and this is the best sort of stock in my opinion to get when you're just starting out. This is the first one that I ever purchased when I was 24 and I was very very nervous because I was like oh am I going to lose my money? I was very very worried about that but not that I'm saying that there's no potentiality for you to lose your money, but you know, this is a very low risk, low reward type of stock in the sense that they pick stocks out for you. You know, the top sort of blue chip companies in Australia, Woolworths, Combank, you know, West Farmers, all of that kind of stuff, and they put it into one account for you. So, you know, if you buy a hundred shares of AFI, then you have like a certain percentage of West Farmers and a sort of certain percentage of Woolworths and all that kind of stuff. And it's not, you know, by any means a large amount of those shares, but you still do have them. And based off of, you know, the long-term uh, reportings of the stock market in Australia, in America, and all over the world, shares tend to keep going up in price in the long term. So the dividend yield is 2.9% and the franking credits are 100%. Now I am not a stock expert and I am not Sugar Mama TV. Shout out to her, love her. I'm gonna put her stuff down below in the description box down below because she's really helpful with that kind of stuff. But franking basically means that you can get a tax return on the uh, stocks that you have bought in that financial year. The great thing that I love about NetBank is that it shows you basically how much dividends um, that you get paid from buying a certain stock. AFI does pay dividends. If you guys don't know what dividends is, it's basically you are a you know stockholder, you have a certain percentage in this company, so then you know the company that you're investing in is like, oh, thank you for investing in us and based off of our profits we're going to pay you this amount um per year sometimes it's quarterly sometimes it's twice a year sometimes it's once a year sometimes it's four times a year it really just depends on whatever stock that you are buying and then there's dividend yields which is like how much of the profit that they will pay you so that's really great to hear now the next stock that i recently purchased actually because i did a lot of research and obviously do your own research but you know energy stocks are very long term, they're not going to plummet, they've been you know, around for years and so I really wanted to invest in energy stock and this is the energy stock that gives out huge amount of dividends, it's like the highest dividend yield for an energy stock and so I really wanted to invest in it and this is AGL Energy Limited, stock ticker AGL. The dividend yield is 8% which is insane and there's no franking for this one so you can't get a tax return on it and this is very unique to Australian stocks so American stocks I believe you don't get a tax return on you know the taxes and it's not like t like tax free or I believe you have to pay taxes on those stocks whereas if it's franking then you don't have to pay those taxes. So in comparison AFI the dividend yield is 2.9% and AGL is 8% which is insane. The next stock, which I know will always be up and running. I'm not the type of person that invests in companies that are doing very, very well um, for the past five years or even 10 years. Um, for example, Tesla is doing incredibly well, but I'm never going to invest in Tesla. I'm never even going to invest in Starbucks because I remember, of course, this was the crash of 2008, the financial um, crash, but you know, all Starbucks stores closed down in Australia, they closed down in America, and it's like, yes, it's very popular now, but what about in 30 years? Like, is it going to be popular? what if there's gonna be another coffee company you know what I mean but in comparison to like banks um, Bank of America is the first American stock that I ever purchased the one and only stock that I do have currently um, in the American stock market because out of all of the depressions and out of all of the you know stock crashes Bank of America has been the one that has still been like paying out dividends and has never 
really fully like crashed or went bankrupt or anything it's like the the oldest you know one of the oldest stocks that you can ever get that you can get and um, so that's why that was my decision I'm very much about stable stock investing the third stock that I picked out was CBA stock ticker CBA which is Commonwealth Bank it is currently Australia's most profitable biggest bank and it has been for a very long time I believe it used to be Westpac and now it's Commonwealth the dividend yield is 3.6% and the franking credits is 100% which I love that's what I pay attention to the most is the dividend yield and the franking and that's it period the next stock that I have is <laughs> Fortescue Metals Group, LTD, stock ticker FMG, which is a materials stock. And so just like I said before, I want to have a diversified portfolio of not only what uh, shares and what stocks I'm going to be purchasing in, like I'm not going to be putting all my eggs in one basket, I'm also not going to be just investing in index funds, or I'm not just going to be investing in banks or tech or materials or energy or you know industrial things but just like energy industrials and materials is something that is never going to plummet it's always going to be growing because we're always going to be using it this dividend yield is 14.3 percent which i believe is the highest out of the entire like asx which like if you're american obviously there's um there's the nasdaq and the franking credits are 100 percent as well which is like i'm just mind blown like I have tears in my eyes like I'm just mind blown over this let's get on to everyone's favorite index fund Vanguard now this was I believe the second stock that I've ever invested in uh, this is stock ticker symbol VAS which is Vanguard Australian shares index now based on my research a lot of people say that it's best to invest in uh, index funds mostly um, as opposed to individual stocks because you know it's more diversified which is what you want because you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket it's more stable which I 100% agree with, but you get more uh, return on your investment if you invest specifically solely on one company. So I do agree with that, um, but and as I was starting out, which if you're just starting out and you're figuring out what to get, index funds literally are the best thing that you can possibly get as you're starting out. Now you're going to be seeing a lot of index funds that I bought and this was just like at the very start of my stock purchasing journey. So that was a little bit of background information there but basically VAS, so the franking is 50% and there's no dividends but what I love about VAS, let me show you. So VAS invests in Commonwealth Bank of Australia, BHP Group, CSL, Westpac, West Farmers, Macquarie, uh, Woolworths, Telstra, different index companies have different uh, rules and benefits like Vanguard has 300 companies that they invest in, AFI is a little bit less but AFI has 100% franking and pays dividends whereas Vanguard doesn't. I don't want to keep on putting all my money in one index fund so I'd rather put a little bit there, a little bit there, you know, for different, you know, benefits, not have too many eggs in one basket. So the next index fund that I have is Vanguard Index International Shares ETF which is stock ticker VGS. This is holding every type of share that isn't from Australia, so America, Canada, China, Hong Kong but there's no dividend yield and there's no franking credits. This ETF provides exposure to economies including Japan, UK, Switzerland, France and Canada. There's some stuff in Finland, Belgium, Spain, Italy, Denmark, Sweden, Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland, France, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet which is Google, Tesla, JP Morgan, Johnson & Johnson, Visa, United Health, Berkshire, Home Depot, 1,505 different companies that I don't even know about. But it's exponentially growing in the long term. You will have an, a return on investment. And if one of those companies shoots up, that means the stock shoots up. The more options that you have, the better. The next stock that I'm invested in is Vanguard Australian Shares High Yield, stock ticker VHY. So it only invests in 64 companies rather than 1,500, but these are the companies that have higher dividend yields. Woodside, APA, Tabcorp, Coles, Macquarie, Transurban, Fortescue Metals, which is what I am invested in, uh, Telstra, ANZ, NAB, Westpac, West Farmers, Commonwealth, BHP. They keep saying there's a pattern that, you know, Commonwealth, West Farmers, all of these stocks are very good because 
you know, all of these index funds are investing in them. The next index fund that I am currently invested in is Vanguard US Total Market Shares Stock Ticker Symbol VTS. Now, I bought this when I was living in Australia and I did not know that I was going to be moving to the US and have the ability of buying as many US stocks as my little heart desired, but it's still good because Australian shares has a lot of benefits to it that US shares do not. This basically invests in all of the US companies that are blue chip. Second last stock is West Farmers Limited, stock ticker WES. Now this is West Farmers which holds Target, Kmart, Kohl's, Liquorland, a bunch of other places. Um, and this is like an index fund in itself even though it's just one company but it's holding different companies. I really believe in Kohl's and obviously believe in all of those kind of companies because they have been around for decades. Kohl's is loved by so many Australians and I really think that in the long term they're going to be exponentially growing a lot and not only is it Kohl's, it's Target and Kmart and all of those companies that just like you know Walmart like people aren't gonna stop shopping at Walmart. The dividend yield is 2.9% which isn't a lot but it's a great great stock to have and the franking is 100% which is incredible. Now the next stock is loved by many Australians uh, just like Commonwealth and it is Woolworth stock ticker symbol WOW W O W. Now this grocery store so Coles, I guess you can say, is like Trader Joe's. Woolworths is like Whole Foods, I guess. And it's a little bit bougier, just a little bit more bougier. It, it is a blue chip Australian company. And during COVID, they have really revolutionized grocery shopping. They've invested in so many different things. And they just keep on growing and revolutionizing. So I really believe in Woolworths. And the dividend yield is 2.6%. And the franking is 100%. Like, franking in Australia is absolutely insane if you don't have Australian stocks even if you're you know American or Canadian or if you're in another country I definitely recommend you guys investing in some Australian stocks if you can get your hands on VAS that would be ideal it's Australian stocks with Vanguard it's easy to navigate so definitely I suggest you guys get some Australian stocks because they're very good uh, so those have been my 10 Australian stocks I am excited to share with you guys my US stocks I only have a one currently and I can't wait to share with you guys my 10 American stocks that I will be slowly building up and yeah I'll see you guys in the next video hope you have a very great day and thanks for watching bye